How do? And welcome back to We Will Rise Again with myself, Tenacious G. Uh, we've got to the championship within two seasons, so consecutive promotions. I'm really excited to show you what's been going on in terms of the transfers. Uh, but just before we get into that, I just want to say I've been tinkering around with a few things that I've moved, like the camera position slightly. I've uh, moved where the, where the microphone is. So instead of it being here now, it's now up there. And I've just uh, adjusted the settings. So if I, I just want some feedback, really, on, on what you think uh, of the um, the voice quality, basically. I guess the yeah the mic quality is what I'm actually looking for. But yeah, if you can uh, drop us some um, some feedback below in the comments, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. Right, so before we get into the actual episode, you can see there's a few little different things happening here as well. Uh, I'm doing uh, the recording from Streamlabs OBS as opposed to OBS. Um, basically, I don't know, I just think that the way that I was doing um, the other way where I had the camera separate, it probably wasn't that much needed for these videos. So where, as and when I need to, I'll just take the camera off when I come to something where I think I'm blocking. Plus. You know, it's a showcase a little, a little bit of what happens when I do stream. I've got like the things underneath where you can see the G, S, B and F and the people's names underneath and the people have done the recent things. Um, so yeah, they're not just random letters. Like uh, the, the one next to F stands for follower. So the last person to follow was GTS and all the numbers and whatever. But yeah, um, by all means, check us out. Link for Twitch is in the d description below. Be good to see you there. But one thing you've probably noticed is we've got quite a bit of money and you might be thinking, gee, what the hell's happened here? You've gone from League One to Championship. You're not going to have, any, have that many players worth much, if it, that well, if anything at all, really. And you'd probably be right. There's been a lot of change. Uh, I'm going to get into that shortly. But one key thing that I, that's not really been mentioned so far in this save, but I think I might have done it in the very first episode, but the one main thing was that there was a clause for Rob Holding at Arsenal and basically, I was able to, to sell that clause for, I think it was a shy of six million. I think it was. Uh, let me just find it. I'm completely wrong. You can just see it there. It's 5.257, I believe, or there, thereabouts. I don't know if it will show it somewhere in the transfers. I haven't really looked into it, but that is exactly what I've done. I've, I've sold that clause um, because I, I, I looked at what happened when we were Arsenal. They signed on to another long-term deal. And all I could think of is I'm in debt now. I mean, this, some, of his, some of this is the money you get from Championship as well because um, you can see down here we were down at minus 2.58 million um, but that's obviously jumped up because of what's just happened and obviously the money as well with championship so we're in a decent position now for the foreseeable we have still got the debt 23 million pounds worth is still to come out so that is something that has hap happened i've got to income here i'll probably tell you on here actually let me find it it just comes under player sold it's all, all it can be we've had quite a few season tickets and rabbits so you can see how much money we've, we've, we've gained uh, but yeah, in terms of the nitty gritty, we'll get into the transfers now and, and show you what's been uh, what's been going on. Right, so I'm going to show you this this page first because, yeah, as you can see, there's some names on there which I didn't really want to let go. I'm talking like from here to here, and I've had I felt like I've had no choice uh, in the in the matter because really, they wanted too much money, and I still was in the mindset of you know if likes of uh, I mentioned it last episode like Dale Fonzo wanting eight, eight grand a week. Not a chance, mate. 31 years old. He's probably going to get picked up by someone and do well for him. But he's already his pace has already dropped from 15 to 14. You know, and that's within like uh, well less than a month of being released. So I think the writing was in the wall anyway. And I don't know if he would have been good enough for the championship. I'll have to wait and see. But uh, well, we probably won't see him to be honest with you. I'll keep an eye out for him. But um, it's something we're going to be looking into in the future. It was the same sort of story for for Goss. Darcy, Francis, all wanting like two, three grand at least. I think Goss wanted like five or six, and I just couldn't justify it. Uh, Sarsovic was another one as well. Uh, so it does mean we've lost quite a few key players there. I mean, there's a, a solid five players that played regularly for us from the first two seasons. So that obviously in itself is going to be a task. So let's show you who we brought in. The first two players are brought in, well, you could argue th uh, three players. Uh, Liam Smith has returned for another season. We've signed him, I think, uh, on for the end of next season in January. So, I think, oh no, that, I, no, I got him in January and I signed him on for another year. So that's what I've done. Max Million, uh, Max McMillian, uh, sorry, from Leeds. Uh, six grand total fee. He's getting paid, you know, 2.3 grand a week, which I thought was on par roughly with what Delfonso was getting. So I thought it was a decent option. As you can see, he doesn't look much different, if I'm honest with you, in terms of his attributes. So a little bit slower, a bit more agile than what I've been, but some decent numbers, like his composure is better. Um, but yeah, we're interested to see if he uh, plays a key role this season. Um, I'm quite hopeful. South African lad as well. 
Uh, and otherwise, Luke McCormick has come in. He got released. Uh, no, he didn't get released. I signed him from... Is it Bristol Rovers I signed him from? No, I signed him from Chelsea. It wasn't Bristol Rovers last season. In League One, did quite well. I'd say did quite well, but he, he, he didn't do that well, to be honest with you. The reason why I signed him, it was cheap, 15 grand, um, and the fact that I loved his mentals, essentially. He's a leader. It's maybe something we've maybe lacked at times. Obviously, we've had Sarsovic, and with him leaving as well, like... The real lead, there was no real leadership candidates. Uh, next is um, next is on oh, next season, should I say, because that was at the back end of last season before it updates. Uh, is Adria Burnaby Burnaby right? Burnaby, I don't know. He's, he's a Man City youngster, uh, very, very good at this level. Left footed, of course, is apparently a centre midfielder. I'm going to try and play him on the wing because he's got some pace, uh, decent crossing ability as well. First touch is amazing, it's unreal. Got a bit of flair about him as well, so quite pricey, six grand a week. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if he lives up to that, that price tag. Uh, he's out of contract in the summer as well, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. But he's on 20 grand a week, um, generally speaking. So it's going to be interesting if, to see if he lowers his demands if it comes to that. Next up, we needed a goalkeeper because we lost Krellen, unfortunately. Lewin did, did, not Lewin, Fleetwood didn't want to loan him to us. Um, sadly, I think he has moved on to Lewin, which is why I said Lewin. Um, and now we, need, we were in a position where we needed to get another keeper. We've gone into the free market again, the free transfer market, once more. Uh, Alfie Whiteman comes in from Spurs. He got released and 3.3 grand a week. It's a lot more than what we were paying Krellen. I think he won 330 quid a week, so it's like 10 times more. Uh, instantly valued at 550 grand, which uh, which I think is, is decent. It means his potential uh, resale value. Nothing really stands out as amazing. You know, aerial reach is decent, strength and jumper reach as well. But positioning is pretty weak and what have you. But I, I just like the look of him. I liked the look of him. 13 reflexes, one on ones is only 11, handling 12. It wasn't There wasn't many other players that were like as good as, say, Krillin. Uh, Krillin. Krillin. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z reference again. But look, it remains to be seen. It's his first season in, in the championship. I'd like to think he'd be good enough for this for the first season anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. And he's relatively young, he's 23. He could probably improve as well. So uh, we'll keep an eye on him. Next up, Matt Crooks from Rotherham. Released from Rotherham. Solid all round player in my eyes. He's on 4,500 quid a week, which is quite a lot. Probably more than what I wanted to pay. Six foot four as well, so he's a bit of a giant. And um, yeah, like I said, solid all rounder. Hopefully he'll do a job for us. He's going to cover both centre mid and Cam. So obviously we lost Darcy, so we needed to re replace him. So hence, um, I, I thought this guy fit the bill really. Uh, covered like two to, to cover two positions, losing Sarsovic for instance, and um, obviously Darcy. I thought when you look at their wage demands for the two players, probably going to be like nearly double what they wanted. So what he wanted, should I say? So I was more than happy to bring him in, especially with the fact that he didn't cost us anything. Harrison Murphy, I know I'm, I'm skipping past Louis Barry first, but Harrison Murphy is just a youngster coming in at like 250 quid a week. It's just a bit of a punt, see how he does, see if he improves and see if I can sell him on. Uh, that's the whole gist of it, his signing. But yes, you can see Louis Barry, he looks very, very spicy. Uh, if I do this to myself, I love the flair, I love the determination, I love the fact that he's fairly quick to start off with. He's only 19, so he's only going to improve as well. Uh, finishing first touch and dribbling all 14s, heading and, and long shots is 13, so all round game's not bad. He's not the tallest, so he's not going to win many headers. And I like the fact that he's agile. I love a, an agile player. Um, the ability, as it says, to, to start, stop, and move in different directions at varying levels of speed, which is very, uh, very nice. So actually, off the ball's 12, it's probably just about the minimum. Same with decisions. Uh, but I I'm liking, like I said, I think he's going to improve. He's on 5,750 quid, which is quite a lot. I think he's the highest earner, if I remember rightly, apart from Bernab Bernabe. I think he's the second highest earner then. But he's coming from Villa. I'm hoping he's going to do us a job. In terms of outs, there's no one really not not noticeable, really. Dan Cashman's a youngster who brought in. He's done a bit for us. I mean, I've sold him on at 66. Well, he had done out for us. He played on loan for someone. 66 grand we got for him. We got some loan fees for certain players. A lot of players have gone out on loan. Uh, the other one was George Thomason, who's a guy who starts up at the, at the club. Um, and yeah, just we're never going to play him. He's never going to be good enough for me. 31 grand. It's not a lot of money. We've actually made a profit in terms of. Uh, the fees here so but the it's his first season of championship i didn't want to take the piss too much um in terms of with the, the money because obviously it's easy to get carried away when you get given like five million quid for a for a sell-on clause i think oh i know i'm going to put it straight into the into the team because we have actually got two million left to spend 
because we haven't actually spent any spent any of it. You can see there's a couple more offers. We'll have to keep uh, wait and see if we get these in. Ryan Wintle, director of football, has been chipping in with a couple of bids and determining whether I think they're good enough. I've allowed them to go through to, to the contract stage. So um, yeah, we've offered a contract to Ryan Wintle. It's going to be for roughly about six grand a week, which would tie in with the highest paid earner. But I think if you look at those numbers there, in fact, I'm in the way, so let's just quickly just quickly in. I think so far, it's, I fully, completely scouted him, but I still think he's going to be worth it. He, he fits the box-to-box -box role perfectly in my eyes. You can see here, everything's highlighted. Aside from finishing, which is only eight, but everything else I think is, uh, is, is good enough, uh, definitely for this level. He's from Crew, so they've got a great academy, as uh, it's probably everyone knows. Um, yeah, and we'll have to wait and see on other other options but I'm trying to sell one or two of them I'll play one or two other players I'll send them out alone um yeah so we'll have to wait and see because yeah that's Eric the 10 the guy I couldn't get a work permit for he's actually leaving we've made a profit of 53 grand so you know it's, it all adds up it's not really masses of, of, of money but uh, it is what it is right so I've just I've just knocked myself off for this part because uh, I'm, in, I'm in the way basically we're predicted to finish bottom of the league even with the signs we've made so far so it's going to be interesting to see if we can prove those critics wrong with 201 outsiders uh, for the title that's how, the way I look at it I like to view it as po uh, view it in a positive light uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if we can do that um, Hull and Blackpool obviously came up with us so yeah it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see we've got some big teams in here You've got the likes of Norwich in here, you've got Fulham, Sheffield United, obviously the ones that came down. Then you've got the likes of Brentford, Derby, Middlesbrough, Forest are always going to be an issue, I reckon. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting. Um, so with that said, let's have a look and see how we've got on. Right, so as you can see... <coughs> been going a little bit better than expected. We are currently third in the league, which is a massive surprise to me considering our squad. Um, just a reminder that this is the tactic nothing much has changed it's wing backs on attack it's very offensive don't get me wrong I like to think that I play I've done it for the last like five years or so it's play, you know, attack is the best form of defence and we've got uh, both wingers on attack advanced forward and shadow striker on attack and we've got support role in uh, box to box and bowling in midfield occasionally I drop the wing backs to support depending on how we're doing in, in terms of uh, if we're getting uh, dominated in terms of chances but generally speaking, we do tend to create a hell of a lot more chances. I'll get into the, the squad later. Um, let's have a quick look and see how we've done in the actual um, the, uh, fixtures. You can see here what we've done. We've had a, a, a few, let's call them lifelines in terms of money situation. Because uh, we've had some good results in the Cup. We beat Everton in the third round of the Carabao Cup. And I believe we were 2-0 down. No, we weren't. We was 1-0 down and, and then... The, Oh, look who it is. It's Juan, Juan Macias. <laughs> Player of God, Burnley. is uh, absolutely brilliant for me. Yeah, we beat Everton, but then we lost in the fourth round. Three nils. Pretty straightforward against Wolves. We really struggled against them. But as you can see, we had a bit of a rocky start. We had a couple of losses against QPR and Derby early on. I'm thinking you know, it's going to be a long season. But just just had like little spells where we've won like three in a row and stuff. And, you know, with the odd loss in between. But there's one thing you've probably noticed right at the bottom, which you probably can't see from me, but there you go. Man City, we managed to beat them. I have no idea how, but we actually beat Man City. Man City. I could not believe it. When we got them, I thought, oh, we're going to play fucking Man City. And that team is pretty damn strong. Edison in goal, Ruben Diaz, uh, even... Uh, get out of here. Even uh, Alaba's in the team. We've got Rod Rodri, Tielemans has gone there, De Bruyne. Uh, Sterling, Die Battle has gone there and we somehow won. I have absolutely no idea. Crooks, common theme, that has been absolutely shocking for us. Um, you know, you look at the chances and we got absolute. Well, can you see the chances? You can just see the chances. Destroyed us, really. How. I mean, Whiteman, 8.7. How often do you get an 8.7 from a goalkeeper or anywhere near that? I was well chuffed. I mean,. Blake Tracy scored a goal and still got only got a 6.9. So realistically, you're looking at like 6.23, something like that. We played shockingly. But you know what? We won. I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm excited to see who we get in the next round. Uh, this was actually the game that just like literally happened. Just I just played this game before I did before I saved it to do the uh, to do this video. So but yeah, very uh, excited about what's been going on. Other transfers you might have already seen. Uh, we had a bid as well from uh, LA Galaxy, and I did actually accept it because I thought it was a d decent amount of money and I had a, a young player coming through I might be able to use. 
but he turned him down, uh, which I thought was a bit surprising because I thought it's America. You know, he's 27 years old. It's not in compa comparable to the championship. It's probably not a bad level. So I'm a bit surprised that happened. But in terms of the, the ins, we've had a couple of players come in. I noticed that I sent all my goalkeepers out alone. <laughs> and I had t uh, two, two goalkeepers were injured at one point. Uh, so we managed to get a few in. But first we've got Ryan Winter, who is that midfielder. I showed him just before we cut to this part of the season. He came in eventually for... Uh, 175 grand a week, which is obviously uh, we don't spend that much money. It's on six grand a week, as I mentioned. It's only valued at two million though, so I think it's definitely sell on value um, there. But he's definitely our highest paid for player in my uh, tenure. Daniel Barden was a goalkeeper that we've got in. He's actually played a handful of games for us because he's covered the injury. Um, he did all right, to be fair. He only conceded uh, the two goals and kept three clean sheets in the five games that he played. In fact, he played two in the cup as well. Conceded four. But um, yeah, he's done a job for us. He's not amazing, just a bit of a, a young punt, really. Uh, Harvey Wiles Richards, he is already on the transfer list because uh, he did shit at training. A ball at him and he complained, saying that he wasn't doing that badly, even though it was like less than six. So he was certainly on the list. I'm trying to get rid of him, but I don't know if anyone will come in for him. But again, another young punt. But then Callum Britton, quite excited about this guy. Uh, 105 grand was that, I think I saw. 125 grand. Um, basically in total no, not really exceptional in the technicals but I loved his mentals he's got nothing less than 10 and his physicals might as well be the same as well but strength to the you know yeah. I don't see strength as that important or as important for right backs but uh, obviously if we get to double figures I'll be buzzing and I'm just quite excited I think this could be a starting right back for, for the next couple of years at least uh, depending on what division we're in of course uh, he's on 5 grand a week which is quite expensive uh, so it's a case of I need to make sure that the you know, the backup is probably in a lot less wage, so we'll have to wait and see what happens in that regard. But yeah, quite a decent amount of, about of uh, potential left in him. And I do like this, he enjoys big matches and he is fairly consistent. I tried to aim for at least those two, at the very bare minimum, a fairly consistent player uh, performer. As long as he doesn't say dreads over here, dreads uh, big matches, I'll be happy to sign him. I've started to pay attention to that a lot more now, especially with this skin. So yeah, getting George is still the backup. Uh, this season and he's only on a grand a week so it kind of I thought six grand for, for two right backs I didn't think that was too bad for two players so and as you can see it's a, it's a bit of an upgrade on him isn't it if you, if you just quickly go back it's definitely sees an upgrade in terms of outs um I, I don't think you can actually see Callum Britton but it doesn't matter you, you saw him in his glory in terms of outs uh Kellen Gordon went because obviously we brought in Callum uh, Britton Kellen Gordon again it was worth a bit of money um, Portsmouth came in for him, sold him for 400 grand, so made a decent bit of profit on him because we uh, we got him for free. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, he's on a roughly the same wages as what he was with us as well, surprisingly. But uh, did a job for us. He wasn't it wasn't amazing for us. 6.82 for us, which wasn't like I said, great. So it was a bit of a no-brainer when the, when the bid came in, bit of extra money. Uh, but the the biggest surprise that you probably have seen, you can probably just see it down here at the bottom. Because all the others are loans. Joel Bumbongo has left the building. And it's because IFK Gothenburg, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I know it's a weird like, pronunciation. And he was doing it was doing bits for us as well. He was, you know, 14 goals in 18 starts in the league, three off the bench. You know, he was doing very well for us. But the fact is that Louis Barry is ready to step into his shoes. And we've got Max um, McMillan who is, I'm get, constantly getting pestered by the Leeds manager, which I believe now is Eddie Howe, I think, off the top of my head. So I thought, well, I've got two strikers. I'm only playing with one. I've got a, a couple of young strikers in, like, who aren't playing because there's only under 18s and like up to 19-year-olds like, or whatever. I thought, worst comes, worst comes to worst, I can have one of them on the bench and just play one of those two strikers that I've got. So when this big came in, I thought long and hard about it, and I just saw... If we stay in this division, I don't know what f uh, finances is going to be like because I've relied heavily a lot on that 20% like clause cashing. Um, yeah, they come in 1.4 million. I think it's rising to 1.8 as well, if I remember rightly. And I don't know, I just thought... Sod it. I think when you look at Louis Barry, you know, who's playing more games, I was only started 11 games and had nine off the bench... Got six goals in three appearances. You might be thinking it's not that great, but look how he's improving. He's got green arrows going around, and I just think the more games he gets, the more he's going to do. 
Um, but yeah, he's played some games on the right, to be fair. If I quickly just click on the positions here, he's actually played five games on the wing. So it's been covering a few areas for us. Purely for the fact is I didn't want to take Mumbongo off. So what I've done is then is, uh, I've, because I've got rid of Mumbongo, it means he's going to get more game time. And I'm excited to see if he steps up. Um, but yeah, bit of a shame we've let him go. I did say about him being a natural replacement for Del Ponzo, but you know what? It's money, and the key the key part of this story was to try and get rid of the debt first and foremost, and then move on after that. And I think with that, it's a big step. That tied in with all the rest of the money. I mean, we've raised two million quid here, plus that five million. That's seven million off the the you know the twenty five million that we had or whatever it, whatever it was uh, debt like guaranteed. Obviously, we've got wages to pay for and stuff like that, so we we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, quite excited about that. Uh, Politic ended up going out on loan to because um, I couldn't sell him because he wanted high wages, and I just thought it was worse than what we've got because um, obviously Burnaby could uh, cover his roles and, and, and whatever else, so um, as well as uh, Crooks. Because I thought we had better than what we had, so we sent them out on loan. But, uh, but because that's the only thing we could do with him. So before we wrap up the episode, uh, basically we'll just show you the top performers so far. Top appearance baker is. Brendan Galloway, uh, it was actually been, it's, it's been really, really solid, really, without being spectacular, 6.79, maybe showing that it's maybe a step up a little bit too far. Frankie Kent, though, on the other hand, who I brought in, 6.93. But one player you could definitely see has been a massive improvement on what we've had. Well, I say massive improvement because Krellin was really good, but Whiteman's come in and got a 7.18 in 22 appearances, which for a goalkeeper, it's unheard of to see that green, you know, background. So yeah, it's been very surprised, surprising how, how you know how we've relied a lot on his goalkeeper. Oh, I say surprising, it's probably not surprising considering we got promoted like twice in a row. But the fact that he's kept us in games, it's surprising he's done well because normally if you get like, if you under if you under onslaught all the time, then eventually you end up conceding. As you can see, he's performing at a four star level for us. Um, Burnaby. I mean, I'll quickly just go into goals. I'm happy I'll probably be on that list. I'm just going to do like top three. Um, yeah, Barry's got seven goals now. Obviously, uh, Mumongo had like 14, which is why we've got that. Powers done all right with five goals. Nine assists, actually. He's done very well in that regard. Um, Obeda's stepping up a little bit. He's got four goals. This is what it looks like at the minute, Obeda. He's always improving and uh, he's, he's looking very exciting. I'm not playing him up front, though. I've been playing him on the wing this season. Um, I just think if we can get his crossing up with his first touch, I think he could be really like a, a special player for us if, if well, if all checks out on me we can keep hold of him but obviously if a big offer comes in i might be forced to you know show me hand and take the money because that's what you're doing it <laughs> you know when you're a team in the championship from below you've got that premier league money so you've got to sell your sell your assets and build from within um but yeah he's been spectacular so far but burn so far his average rating doesn't reflect what he's doing. I mean, he's got nine assists and three goals, which obviously it's pretty a pretty good return in fairness. But for what we're paying compared to everyone else, and like there's other players like Liam Swift at 500 quid, he's got three goals and four assists. Why it's five goals, five assists less? He still had a like a. It feels like he's had a better impact. But I don't know. It just there's something about him. It's just not not right. He has had a few injuries, to be fair. I just wonder if they've affected him. McMillan hasn't really done much. He's only got three goals and one assist, but he's only had six starts and a lot of games off the bench. And generally speaking, I've normally brought him in like 15 minutes to go, so he's not really going to do much. Um, but yeah, it is an assist maker, as you've already seen. Irving's having a pretty solid season. Uh, two goals, four assists. Regan Riley's had a bit of game time. Let's just show you him a little bit because he's one of the OGs. And um, yeah, he's, he's coming on nicely, but not really fast enough. I think... Depending on what happens, I don't know if to sell him if I can because his value is going up now. Or loan him out again because he has got a few years left on his on his deal, so it might be a case of a loan him out maybe second half of the season that has a coming to this window, or whether I, you know I keep him and maybe do it next season if I look to strengthen. But it's, it all depends on where we finish, of course. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been really good though. It's been really. Uh, I've been really bored with how we've done. It's a bit concerning that there's two goalkeepers are like two of the best performers. But Aaron McCormick, this is another youngster to keep an eye out for. Um, he has got a few negative traits I, I dislike, but um, he's shown up on the on the training reports all the time, always improving. 
and I don't see him as a striker personally. I see him as probably more of a midfielder. Maybe as a cam. I don't know. His technique's a little bit weak. It was very weak, to be fair. But again, I'm, I'm going to look to keep building him. If you quickly just look on his, on his progress and go into his attributes and all time. I mean, I'm in the way of the like left-hand side ones, sort of. I mean, you, you can kind of guess what they are. Long shots is three, plus three. Driven's plus three. But physical is up by four and pace and balance, stuff like that. So, and he's only 17, and this is all in, in the space of essentially 12 months. So I'm really excited to see if this guy can develop any more and maybe push for a for a starting role within the next two seasons, I, I would imagine, if he continues in the vein that he is. But it all depends on his progress in, in this regard. So in terms of the club vision, just want to show you this. There's been some co um, some, some coaching courses because we've been in not in the red for the first time. So I've been doing some coaching courses, so I will show you myself straight after. Well, JJ Okocha straight after. And basically, as you can see, A plus. Or um, Neufeld's not been playing that well neither, so we might be looking to see what we do with him as well. But yeah, defensive solid, defensively solid football and direct football. They're disappointed. Uh, but the fact that we're third, I think, is probably the main factor uh, of contributing to this A plus rating. Uh, but yeah, side players to sell for a profit. We've done that, so keeping them happy in that regard as well. Uh, and we're working, of course, within the wage uh, budget, which at the minute we are eight thousand underneath. So I've I, it's kind of a rule I try to stick to um, when you're in the, when you're in an area where you haven't got money. Um, ideally, it'd be less, but it's just really difficult to get players that are capable of performing to level that you want. So, but yeah, just quickly before we go, I'll show you myself of JJ Koch again. Um, and as you can see, yeah, we've actually shown a few little improvements because of these coaching courses, I like to think. So I can't remember what they were at the beginning, but uh, we are definitely showing some improvement. Um, we're doing quite well uh, in terms of, uh, um, like with motivating and stuff, we've actually managed to uh, keep a lot of people happy. So I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy with how it's gone so far. Characteristics you can see here, you know, high tempo pressing game, uh, young players with first team squad. Um, yeah, quickly just before we go as well, the tactic as well, it is a gig and press. I know people say it's OP, and people say this formation's OP, but I've not played this formation uh, for quite some time, for probably about five years uh, of the rendition, of, of, like five years of, of the game, I, you know, FM basically 16. Um, I usually play two up top, but I found there were just, I, there were just it just wasn't working basically so i dropped one of the strikers to the shadow striker to see if that worked that's how i came about this initial formation um and then afterwards obviously when you stream and stuff people say oh it's op is it's gig and press it's like well i get that but i don't know but yeah the as you can see here uh, shooting sight i find that shooting from distance it seems well shooting in general it seems to be quite op obviously if you've got people who've got a decent uh strike uh, you know, long shots and technique then you seem to get quite a lot of long shots. I don't know if anyone else has had that. Quite a lot of long shots seem to go in. Uh, but yeah, overlap. It's very attacking. Don't get me wrong. Uh, with the exception, exception of, of my uh, occasionally I knock off overlap left and right and drop them to support if it, if we're getting overrun. But I usually I, I usually judge it after like 20 minutes at game. See how we're getting on. Obviously, it's bit, it's bit me in the ass several times. But again, attack is the best form of defence for me. Um, and yeah, um, I think it's it's working very well for us so far. Uh, and that's a bit of a rundown of the of the tactic and that is it for today's episode thank you very much for joining us i'm very uh excited with how this save is going um it, obviously we're sat in third is an outside chance we could get promoted again which i think would be unheard of uh, but you never know as strange things have happened in football and in particular football manager as uh, you know there is you do tend to when you're streaming you hear stories of people getting consecutive promotions you know um is that like joke from Jay and in between us, where you know, getting uh, walking was it to um, Champions League or something like that in six seasons? That sort of thing doesn't get <laughs> doesn't go unnoticed. So, yeah, it seems to be going that way somewhat. Maybe the tactic is quite. Maybe if someone done a tactic that's quite overpowered, but it's doing well for me now. But there is still flaws. Like I said, we get we get done by the you know we get beat three two a couple of times two one. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work. The players, the personnel is definitely key. Um, and obviously, that's one thing we need to keep doing is strengthening. And we've got the window coming up now. Uh, hopefully, you can join us for the next episode where we'll see what happens in that window. And then hopefully, uh, it will, we'll see what, what happens at the end of the season. And fingers crossed, we might be at least in the playoffs. But uh, like I say, I've been Tenacious G. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, go ahead and press that like button. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you then.